Hello and welcome. I am the Emperor, and this is Crusader Kings 3 Learning as we play, where I play the game, I explain what I do while I do it, so you also can learn how to play the game. And I mean you, yes, you, definitely. Anyone can learn how to play this, because I learned how to play this. It was a very, very difficult first, first 50 hours in Crusader Kings 2, but since that I have been hooked utterly and the third implementation of the game is also great. So if you're coming here now, welcome. This is the place for you to be. This will not be, I won't explain every little menu item that is on the screen, absolutely not. We will only interact with what I interact when I play the game. So the very first thing to get out of the way is starting a game. You do that by entering the game, going into the main menu and then clicking new game. Now, you do not need any of the DLC. None of it. I think uh, Royal Court adds certain amounts that are fun and tools and tournaments are kind of good. The others are mainly flavor, th flavor stuff. I think the Northern Lords is kind of popular as well. Trust the reviews. First, play the game, see if you like it. If you do, if you enjoy it like I do, then go ahead and buy the DLC, but never Unless they're on sale. Unless you're a really hardcore fan, then go ahead. Support the company in this way. Right, we are going to go with the absolute most beginner-friendly start, which is not a preset. <laughs> it is actually what you do when you play the tutorial, which is up here. You start in Ireland. And we are going to do just that. We're going to start in Ireland as well. You have these flags up here where you can set a certain starting condition. Whatever, doesn't matter. We will go here and then we will go for, where is it? Down here, play as any ruler in 867 or create your own. I always suggest starting at the earliest because there are things that you can slowly build up to learning and working through and understanding. If you start a little bit later, there's already a lot of things that you should have learned by then. So I suggest going early. There's few technologies, few things to take care of. It is much easier as a start. Personally, I like to play Iron Man. So the achievements are enabled. That also means I can't save scum. And I suggest you also do that. It's a little bit daunting. It sounds dangerous, right? It sounds like, oh no, what if I lose? Well, yes. <laughs> what if you lose? Then you start a new game. This is the whole point of Crusader Kings 3. Leading your dynasty through the ages, building them up, seeing where they can go. And if you can just save game scum all the time, okay. Uh, I mean, if that's up your alley, absolutely play that way. But if you're new to it and you want to have, I think, the most out of the experience, absolutely go for Iron Man. You have one save game and you can't override that. Uh, it's saved, and if you quit, it's saved, so you can never get out of a bad situation through saving. So, let's go play as any ruler. The game will now mo load over into a map thing, where we can go pick the ruler that we want to play. Now, this looks already a little bit daunting. We're gonna go over to Ireland, and I'm gonna tell you something that is going to be very important throughout the rest of the game as well. So, first of all, we zoom in here. Middle mouse button, down pressed, lets us scroll like this. You can do it with WASD as well. Personally, I prefer the middle mouse button. I'm not quite sure why, but <laughs> that's how I do it. Right. Um, down here, you have these filters, and they have shortcuts. These shortcuts out here are the same as in the game. So this little menu here, you will keep and retain. So for example, I want to see what religions we have. We have Insula here and Catholic there. And we have some Astaru, so there are some uh, Vikings on the island right now. Pressing E brings us back to the general overview. Now, what I want you to consider is starting at a count. It doesn't really matter what count, but count is the lowest rank that you can possibly start as. The reason for that being is that you have the least responsibility imaginable and you have the greatest leeway in growing. If you already are a duke or something, then you have vassals, you need to learn how to do that. If you're a king, you, you have several dukes, several counts. It's all a little bit difficult to learn and understand. So start as a count. You can see what a count is by the size of the flag. This is a duke, 
these are all counts. This is Duke again. And um, a kingdom is even bigger. It has this nice little red crown. And then there are empires. But we're not going to talk about them. Because right now they don't matter where we are. So you want to be a little count here. And it can be literally any of the counties on the Irish Isles. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to randomly pick something here. The reason why Ireland is suggested to be a starting location is because literally you're pretty much saved by the ocean. Early on, very few are going to come and attack you. Often, the reasons that people are allowed to declare war rely on having direct borders with you. Very few have that. Um, like, we, we have no crossings here if we want to cross over into England. We have to go by ship or we have to go over here through these uh, two straight crossings that we have. This one and this one. So, that's all very difficult. So, Ireland is a little bit in itself very contained. So, it is a supposedly easy start. And the tutorial absolutely plays into that. So, I figured having something that is really, really for absolute beginners. Ireland. Ireland is the thing. You can play anywhere, go wherever you like, but Ireland, I think, is a very, very good starting island to really figure out where you are. So we'll pick, I don't know, what, what sounds fun to me. Oh, let's look at the pretty flags. What flag do I like the most? I really like this flag, but he has two counties. He's a count, but has two counties. That is a little bit too much. I want to start smaller, so it will be Desmond, Ormond, Leinster... Etc. How could I tell that it's two counties under one count? He was um, only one flag. Well, these big names here, as you can see them written like that, are for each county. Each county is again sectioned up into baronies. That don't, those don't matter. You can only control a or multiple counties. If you start with two, ah, uh, that's going to be a problem. We're going to talk about that in a moment. So find something that has one flag and one name, basically. That's what you're looking for. So, uh, Brefin. These guys, they have two. If you hover over, you can see the highlight. So this here belongs to them as well. And he's a duke, so no way. He has two names. Nope. We could go for Oriel. We could go for Ulster. Leinster. Ossory. Osmond Desmond. Now, if you go for Desmond, of course, you have only two borders to deal with. But that also limits you a little bit in where you can go. If you go for Ossory, you have a whole lot of more borders around you, which you can deal with. So you could... Expand into Leinster and Norman. Maybe. If you go for Brefin, kind of similar situation, except you have two big neighbors, uh, whereas here you have two big neighbors, but also two small neighbors. So maybe we start with the chieftain of Kerbal in the county of Ossory. And it's the clan or the family, the dynasty Dalburn. We already have an heir. We are quite old. That is possibly not ideal, but eh, it doesn't really matter too much. Behind the camera right now, you can't really see, but uh, there is a... Actually, you can. There is a option here to start a difficulty. There's only normal or easy. There's no higher difficulty. See, it circles around. So normal is with Iron Man, and thus you can have achievements. We're not going to create our own ruler. We're not going to create any other rules. We just leave it as exactly as it is. And I'm not even going to talk about what this guy has, if he's good or anything. It doesn't matter. You can start with literally anyone in this game. I don't think there's really a reason to uh, min-max this right from the start. Of course you can, but eh, I wouldn't say you should. So let's jump right in. We'll start here. We'll set up a new save in the cloud. And very, 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 very simply, we just transition out into this place. Now, let me see. Okay, what am I in the way of? <laughs> Nothing super important. I think I can stay where I am with the camera. Oops. Let me move me around a little bit, though. I need to find OBS, of course. So let me move the webcam just slightly, ever so slightly. Just a little bit up. Like so. Yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> I'm fine. That way I'm kind of out of the way for this game. Right. 
a lot of things that are already here that we could click on, that I could talk about. We could talk about religion, about our culture, about our... Anything. Doesn't matter. You have one goal when you start out in Crusader Kings 3 or Crusader Kings 2, really. One goal only. Survive. Not you personally. This is us, right here. We are Chieftain Kerbal MacDungal of Osiri. He will die. He's 52. He's probably gonna die soon, too. So what we need is a player heir. Luckily, in this case, we already have one. Our half-brother and steward. But that doesn't mean that needs to be our heir. Uh, you need to have someone who has this little green blood icon here. Member of your family and dynasty. If it's a red blood icon, doesn't doesn't work. You need someone who is a green blood icon heir. Then you will be able to continue. The game will tell you if there's no reason or if there's no option for you to continue. If there's no one to inherit, that you can keep playing. All right. So keep that in mind a little bit. We will uh, now continue slightly here. And the first thing we need, and the game is also telling us up here with these little pop-ups, that we need to get married and we need to get an heir. Now, early on, marriage market is a little bit of a problem because there really isn't all that much in terms of options. But these aren't even all that bad. Now, something to keep in mind is we are very small and very weak. We have 540 men we have four champions or knights and we have 200 pikemen. That is not a strong army. Absolutely not. And if we want to expand or just protect ourselves from being taken over, which would also at this stage likely mean game over for us because there's nowhere else for us to fall back to. If we lose our title, we are done. We only have the one. We do have a claim on the county of Meath. Actually on the high chieftain, which is a duchy, which is pretty darn good. Especially since it's a pressed claim, so if we die, this is going to be inherited by our heir. Unlike an unpressed claim, which will go away with our life. So that's pretty cool. So we have pretty much a claim on this thing here, but it really belongs here. We'll figure all that out. For now, we need allies. We need someone to help us. Since we are not married, whoever we will marry will likely bring an alliance with, it, with them. So we have... Someone to call on if enemies should make moves for our lands. Now, if you look at this, you need to have this flag with the little blue flags above it. That will tell you, okay, here you will get an alliance. It says potential alliance, slightly misleadingly so, because I've never actually seen a marriage engagement that didn't result in the alliance that was in indicated here. I don't know exactly why it says potential alliance, but that's fine. Another thing to potentially look forward to is this here. This lady has pressed claims on the Duchy of Gothia and a whole lot of counties, if you can believe it. So since it's a pressed claim, again, our heir can inherit this. So if we have a child with this lady, then we will, our heir will have this and this claim. So there's a lot of stuff going on already. That's pretty interesting. Now you can double click on these places to find out where the heck they are. So this is somewhere here. A little bit further on the edge of, of uh, Anatolia. Is that Anatolia? No. Al Andalus and uh, Castile and Spain, basically. So that's a little bit far away. This alliance won't help us much. Uh, so here, 757. That's not little, but that is also not really something that's going to be super helpful for us out here. Because they would have to get on a ship, they would have to get here. Takes some time, so eh, maybe we can find someone a little bit nearer. And you can easily sell, tell who is nearest by looking at the culture, kind of. So Irish, for example, is very likely to be right next door, and so it is. So if we hover over this, you can see the highlighting of these. So these two ladies here would give us an alliance with Ormond, which is right next door, which is pretty good. And they're stronger than us, so also nice. Then we have some French, Franconian, Anglo-Saxon. Also not bad. Anglo-Saxon is, of course, somewhere here. And you can see it very slightly highlighted over there. So that's where they are. 351. Very weak. Doesn't really matter. Uh, Oriel. Oh, that's a pretty good option. So they're not super strong. But they're also not really adjacent to anything that we would have much interest in at the moment. So if you wanted them to help us, pretty good. Of course, it goes both ways. So we might have to help them as well. 
Also keep in mind the age of your potential wife. They need to be of age with uh, 16 or above. Otherwise, you won't be immediately marrying them and you won't be immediately getting on with fathering children, potentially. So I'm leaning towards this gal, even though the press claims are great. I don't think we will be able to do anything about those press claims anytime soon. Another thing to look out for, these red little hearts or icons or something, these are congenital, meaning they will be inheritable. And if they're red, they're bad, as you can tell here by the tooltip. Very important thing, you can lock a tooltip. There is a setting in the settings. I do believe the default is either waiting and it just kind of locks, or I set it to uh, clicking the mouse button, the middle mouse button. So now you can see the border has changed slightly and I can now hover into the tooltip with my mouse and then I can go over another thing. Everything that has this blue text here is basically further information. And then I can lock this one again and again and again and I can go really really deep in this which is fantastic because everything you want to know about the game is in the game you don't have to go outside you don't have to alt tab read a wiki somewhere or anything you can find literally almost everything almost because there's sometimes a little bit of obscure information that might not be here or not answering directly your question but generally that it is that everything you need is in here right so, something I wanted to point out, we have a bunch of Irish candidates. I don't want to take the ones of our direct neighbor because we might want to try and conquer them, yeah? We'll see. So, this guy looks very attractive. Uh, the other ones here, I wouldn't take because this last here is chaste. as a problem. Minus 25% fertility. Doesn't mean she can't get pregnant, but she's much less likely to. So, we would like to have a partner that is not indeed chaste. So this one here is content, she's compassionate, and she's patient. None of these matter all that much early on. You can later, if you once you understand it all, try and min-max stuff, work like that. But we need an alliance that is close, but not too close. We need um, an alliance that doesn't give us anything bad, potentially. So we're going to go ahead and send a proposal to marry into this family. So now, once he accepts, and he will... Again, if it says we'll accept here, it's never rejected. I've never seen it being rejected. So uh, we'll do that. We'll send a proposal. And we press escape because right now we were looking at some other person instead of ourselves. Well, on pause a little bit before we do anything else. And you'll see the reply to our proposal come in in a moment. Here it is. So to the modest chieftain Kerbal of Ossery, I gladly accept your marriage proposal. You will be joined with my daughter, Murian, in holy matrimony. May Sant Brd bless your union. Signed, Chieftain Kongalach of Oriel. Excellent. So, she's immediately by our side. She's now our wife and our chiefess. Wedding celebration with my marriage to Chieftess Murian. The realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of, of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation. Now, it's very early in the game. Very early in the game. And gold will never ever stop being relevant. <laughs> well, maybe in 200, 400 years, maybe. But for a very long time, gold will be super, super important. Let me check something before I make a decision here. So clicking on our little holding here, the one that has the flag and the little house, there are some others here. We're going to talk about those in a moment. But this is what we have at this very second. So what I want to check is if I click on this, what does it cost me to construct the thing? And you will see something interesting here. For certain government types, I need to push this out a little bit in the way. For certain government types, it's not just gold you have to spend. It is gold and prestige, which is here and there. So keep that in mind. Both are good. Prestige is also a resource that you will need to call in allies in aggression wars. So if you're attacking someone and you want an ally to come with you, you will have to spend your prestige. So be sure to keep that up. Right. So now we know. But we have almost no gold. 
We definitely have more prestige, but prestige is also something that is spent much more liberally. Knowing all that, let's check another thing. The military here. These guys here. They cost us prestige and upkeep. They don't cost us gold and upkeep. And buying them also costs us prestige. So usually, I play someone who is a feudal lord. Let's check him out. He is insular Irish. And he is a tribal lord. He is not a feudal lord. Once you're feudal, all of this changes to gold. But as long as you're a tribal lord, this is prestige. So, usually I play feudal. So I would go, okay, get the money. It's a no-brainer. Of course you want the money. But prestige is much more valuable in a tribal setting. So we'll take, indeed, the prestige. We're not going to levy any taxes. No, 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 no. I'll let my subjects enjoy the festivities without worry or care. Hmm. Because we are such a... Oh. Friendly, friendly man. No other thing. We'll get into all of this in a moment. Don't worry about it. Slow and steady wins the race. So our heir is unmarried. We get this information as well. So our brother here, he needs a wife as well. Same consideration because marrying him off, since he is my brother, will also result in, a, in an alliance. Now, if they were a half-brother, or, well, they are a half-brother, but if they were, let's say, a cousin or something, that doesn't give you an alliance. But if they're direct blood relatives, so a, uh, I think, not mother and father, but brother, sister, daughter, and granddaughter, grandson, son, to a degree as well. So, say, exact same consideration. Anglo-Saxon is pretty close by. Cisalpine, very far away. Bavarian, all very far away. So, let's see. There's another Irish last, but we are no longer in the alliance element. You can also go by alliance power. So this way, the person with the highest alliance power is right there. And we could get an alliance out of Meath. The duchy there. On to which we have a claim. <laughs> so, since we're not going to be able to press that anytime soon, we might as well get an alliance with them going, right? She's not great, but she's not going to be our wife. I mean, she's greedy, she's gluttonous. If they're red outlined like they are here, sometimes they are not. Craven doesn't have a red outline. This one has. Some of them have a green outline. This means, you can see down here in the very bottom of the tooltip, uh, these are sinful to our religion. So they give extra negative modifiers. Or if they are virtuous, they give extra positive modifiers. So let us get this uh, alliance going through our brother. And they are very strong. They have double our strength. No question even. So we'll just have this wedding going. She will come to our court. And that will be that. The reason the game tells you that your heir isn't married... Is because if you die, or when you die rather, and a new heir comes in, and they don't have an heir, and they die immediately, then the game is also over for you. Generally. So you want a good line of heirs. Have many children. <laughs> is, is the best advice I can give you early on. But not too many, and we'll get to <laughs> why that is a thing as well. Oh, interesting. So up here, there are more information things. I opened this. This is a current situation. You can open this by pressing tab. I'm doing that on my keyboard right now. It's very handy. And at first, it has a number here. So all these are unwritten. What I did was a little bit absentmindedly. I open it and I, I go with my mouse over all of these. Just hovering over them. Now we have zero unread. We have a bunch of information here. Some of it matters some of it doesn't matter the thing that caught my eye very first is this here we can negotiate an alliance with our nephew chieftain flan sinner now flan sinner is i have no idea where that man is so we'll double click it ah he's right there so he is part of the high chiefdom of meath that is very good and very interesting so he is his vassal 
We already have, or we will have in a moment, an alliance with him. And that's all nice and well. But this guy might still attack us from within his realm. Because he's an autonomous vassal to a degree. And uh, if we secure an alliance with him, then we could also call him, even if, he, if his liege is already in a war. So that's very sensible to do. And early on, every alliance counts. Absolutely. Because they also dissuade people around you from potentially attacking you. They will take into account, okay, how many people does he have? Oh, but how many people does his, uh, do his allies have? Because if you are fighting in a defensive war, it costs you nothing to call your allies. It's free. So it's a danger as an attacker. You're always slightly in a disadvantage unless you come with great superiority to go right, right out of the gate. There's some other information here, which isn't quite as important. You might not, by the way, have a you can negotiate an alliance thing. Unless, of course, you start exactly here, then potentially you will have that. I should think that the setup is pretty much identical for everyone. Another thing we want to set before we unpause the game again is our lifestyle. Now, you have these trees, but basically they're talent trees. And they are character specific, so only this guy has whatever goes on in here. Once he dies, the next character needs to pick their own talent tree and work through it throughout their lifetime. They all based on their education trait, and I escape out of it and check this again. Based on the uh, education trait, which is a colored thingy. It can be blue, it can be red, it can be purple, it can be green, and it can be white, I think. Those are the ones. Uh, with a little star, or several stars. Two star is eh, middling, it's not great. It can go up to four stars, I think, is the highest. And this kind of decides what you are as per education. So we are a tough soldier. That's what we learned to be. Yeah? And that gives us a monthly lifestyle experience of plus 20% for a certain tree. Now, no matter which tree you pick, you will get experience. You don't have to pick the tree that you are educated in. But you're doing yourself a little bit of a disservice if you don't do that. Because you're going to lose out on experience growth. So, early on, I strongly suggest, or honestly throughout the game, I strongly suggest, unless you have artifacts and stuff, things we'll talk about eventually. Start with the one where you have this little window here, where it says, because of your something something education you gain plus x amount of experience in this lifestyle or pick it now since we're already quite old we have a bunch of things already unlocked uh, we have the full overseer tree which all of these have certain effects and whatnot we're not going to go through all of them right now that we have it doesn't matter literally doesn't matter if you have a different ruler you might have zero you might have whatever what we care about at this moment is just picking the right tree and then picking the right focus within the tree. So you have even more choices to do. Each of these trees here gives the same martial experience per month. So 30, 30, 30. But each of the little selections here has a different extra bonus and a different kind of outlook. It doesn't matter. They kind of are related to the each tree. to each tree. So chivalry is clearly for gallant. Authority is clearly for overseer. Strategy is clearly for strategist. But you don't need to be in the strategy focus to go the strategist route. Doesn't matter. Ideally, later on, you will even be able to very usually finish all trees in a lifetime. We are not going to manage this with this character. It doesn't matter. So what you want to look at is really only what you get out of these and then pick on whatever you might need. I'll go through the three options right here. But it goes for all of these, basically. It's always a consideration of what am I right now. So right now I'm a, I'm a martial-focused character. What do I need early on? Uh, well, control, growth, and dread gain don't help us. Why? Dread keeps your subjects in line. Also the outsiders. The people outside might also be fearful of you. Uh, leading them to be a little bit nicer. A little bit uh, less openly aggressive, let's say. Whereas control gain is you have conquered a new territory, control needs to go up. Might be sensible early on. I don't think it is. 
Strategy Focus gives a flat plus three Marshall, which is pretty darn great because Marshall does a lot of cool things. It helps you in deciding how many troops you can even have, how good they are, how good you are going to be as a, as a military leader, all that kind of stuff. Chivalry Focus is more of how you act actually personally in combat. So if you are leading your armies, you're going to get advantage. You're going to be better in leading your armies. You're going to be better in a direct combat confrontation. And people are going to be more attracted to you. Mainly women at this point, but it's fine. So to me, all of these choices are fine. You can go with any of these choices early on. Doesn't matter. It's literally fine. So since we have the Overseer thing already unlocked, I like to do... A little bit of a RP thing. So we're just going to go with authority focus. It's maybe not the best choice. But it's fine. So we click it. It says we can change this only every five years. You can switch it. I never do. <laughs> because I never think to do it. But if your circumstances change a little bit. For example. Uh, there is a turning coming up. If you have the tours and tournament DLC. You could switch over to chivalry. Which will help you be better in the turning. Absolutely. So we'll take that, we'll click on select, now we have this tree active, we have this active, and slowly but surely our experience bar will fill up. There will also be possibly some events here and there that help push that, but we get 30 points per month. We need a thousand to get the next thing, so uh, 10 months gives us 300, so uh, multiplying that by 3 gives us around 900 so i would say we need about i can't calculate proper three four years something like that to unlock a new perk might never happen to him he's pretty old but we'll see we got a bunch unlocked already it's kind of important if you're playing this yourself and you want to take the time go read through what these things do remember lock your tooltip check what the heck is a battle advantage whatever I don't need it right now because it's not going to really decide how I play at this point. I, I, really, at this point, this early, whatever I have picked, I'm probably going to do the same things, more or less. Might be different if I have an entirely different tree, but uh, really, not so much. Not so much. So we're on pause again. We will have some messages from the al alliances, the marriages that we formed here. All of which will be, oh, yeah, thank you. Well, we'll take that. No, no problem. Yeah, yeah, very good. So, where do we see our alliances here in diplomacy? We have all these little alliances. We have three alliances. We're pretty strong this way. Personally, not so big, not so strong, but this is fine. Very good. So, Crusader Kings 3 pops up events at you from time to time. And they are very often related to your lifestyle choice. So since we are a martial lifestyle, we get a rest for, we for the weary thing. I recommend you read them. You might notice, especially later on, I stop reading them and then just kind of look at the answers and then I pick whatever. But the flavor text is kind of fun very often. And it actually helps you decide what you should do based on what's going on here. It's a little bit less annoying than in other games of Paradox. But it's just... If you have seen them a bunch of times, you know what they say. So we just kind of keep going with it. So let's see. Sweaty, tired and in need of food, a long day of training with the troops is coming to an end. As we search for a place to camp, we spot an old abandoned castle in the distance. Smiling serenely, I declare, that is where we will make our camp tonight. The sun is setting and with every step toward the ruin, it looks more ominous. Before long, the soldiers are whispering about ghosts. So now we get the choice to either just raise our tents outside, which will heighten our soldier morale, giving us an advantage of plus two uh, if we go and command armies, which is pretty strong. But you never know. You never know what you might find inside. So that's us venture inside. I'm sure there's treasures to be found. Now this is part of this event chain still. The game does pause for you automatically. If you can see it down here, it's red and gray striped. That means the game is pausing it for you right now because there's an event somewhere going on that needs resolution before you can continue. So, searching for the unknown. Darkness, dampness and desolation reign inside the castle and all traces of life are gone. 
Peering up decaying stairs, I spot what might be the remnants of lush tapestries and old paintings. Looking down sparring steps, I see only darkness reaching far down into the ground underneath the castle. Now we have some options here. We search the upper floors. We might get up to 75 gold, depending. Or we could go and see what is down in the cellar. And this is the riskier but potentially more interesting option because we could get the trait Brave. Now, traits are these. These three here. Most characters have three. Getting a fourth one, that's pretty powerful. And you don't get a lot of choices and chances are that. So we might become Brave, which is very good for a martial educated focus. You can see we would get Martial plus two, Prowess plus three. Attraction Opinion plus 10, so women will find us more pleasing and appealing. Um, there are some other things there that, you know, likelihood of dying in battle plus 100%. Eh, who cares? We're just not going to go into battle. It's, it's that simple. But it's a 50-50 chance. So we face our fears or we get... I swear, the shadow just moved. Is that blood? What is that sound? And we lose dread because we're kind of scared. And we, we gain some stress. Let's see. Whatever it is, we'll click this. And the place scares us. So we don't become brave. Let's talk about stress real quick. We got 40 stress. It's this little lightning head icon, which in the preview has a different directed lightning than there, but that's okay. Stress is shown down here. And you have three levels of stress. It says here. We have zero out of three. And we have 40 out of 300. And our next level is at 100. So... Each level of stress has 100 points, basically. If you have 300 of those 300, your character dies. Be careful with stress. Be careful with it. There are some ways of reducing it. Events might have a chance of giving you something that reduces your stress or something. Start caring about stress once you are at level 1. And then try to find ways to reduce it. Right now, just know it exists. Know it is dangerous. It is another killer. Just as it is in real life. All right, we'll unpause the game again. There's a new thing that popped up. We can potentially negotiate yet another alliance. Let's see, with him, with whom? This guy. And he is, oh, all the way over in Denmark. He will not accept this. Why? If we hover over this, we get some information. We're extended family, that's good for him. But he doesn't like us very much. He's also quite arrogant. Uh, our dynasty is pretty splendid, but um, we have a different faith. And I already have a lot of alliances. So accumulating all these negatives and these positives gives a minus 101. The game does say you can potentially negotiate an alliance. And it's lying. So if it's kind of grayed out, it's likely that it doesn't work. But the game is inconsistent here, sadly. Generally, it's very consistent, but here it isn't. Uh, so there's a chance that even if it's gray like that, it could still work. So sometimes we have to check. Here we're just going to dismiss it because it doesn't really matter. You can just click it. If you lost something, accidentally clicked it away, you can just click reset and it comes back and you're all fine. All right? Nothing to worry about it. And closing this is just hiding it. So also nothing to worry about. Good. Good. Check this regularly. It, it shows you when it's updating. When there's something new that you haven't seen. But check that regularly. It's very important. Now I'm just scrolling a little bit around. Doesn't really matter. No worry. Okay. So we can declare war here. We can be like, okay. We would like to count, conquer your county. And we're much bigger than him. Why? Because of our allies. Technically, we might not even be much bigger than him. But something to keep in mind, it costs us 8 piety, which is another resource which we have. But we would become the ruler of Leinster. So we would be automatically bigger and stronger than we were before. And that of course is kind of what we're going for. We could do the same in this direction as well, but he has two allies as well. So he's much stronger than this guy. Not much stronger than us, but much stronger still. Another thing to consider, I, I don't actually know if that is a thing. Let me check. 
Mercenaries cost this. Okay, very good. I was just thinking maybe there's a mechanic from Crusader Kings 2 still here. I haven't played Travel in 1. Alright. So, how could we get stronger? By conquering more land. Our armies are set up from levies and men at arms. Men at arms cost us something. In this case, prestige. And they cost different amounts of it, depending on whether or not they are currently raised, so they are standing on the field, or if they're unraised. Now these guys are saying, oh, we're unstationed. You can put them into a holding of yours, so our castle here. And if we do so, they get bonuses out of it. So their damage and their defense increases. Definitely put them somewhere. So they have this now, leading to 28 and 33. Fighting against someone who isn't stationed, they will be better. We could increase their size. So we could say, right, uh, we pay 150 prestige, little crown icon here, to get another 100 of those. Could. Or we create a completely new regiment. 110 prestige, we could get some archers, some bowmen. Which is, by the way, recommended. Uh, bowmen are basically the best bang for the buck option early on. Doesn't matter if you're tribal, feudal or anything. But archers, if you don't know what to do, if you don't care about your army composition much, get archers. Archers are pretty darn good. Um, now, how do I know what to pick? That might be a little bit too in debt, but that's something what I'm thinking about right now. So how do I know what to pick is pretty difficult to say. Everyone around you will have an army like that. You can hover over that and you get an idea. So these guys have bowmen. They have some knights, some levies. Levies are basically just peasants, just meat walls. They don't really matter much. Unless they're in super overwhelming numbers. So they have bowmen. Ideally we would get something that counters bowmen. But someone else around us might have a different army composition. So if we look at this guy. Ah. Oh, he has bowmen, pipemen, and light footmen. So, difficult, difficult. Choices over choices, right? So let's check again. This is a rock, paper, scissor type thing, kind of. So the bowmen, they counter the skirmishers. The skirmishers, or light footmen, they counter heavy infantry. No one has really heavy infantry right now. At least it didn't appear so. The heavy infantry, they counter the pikemen. The pikemen counter the heavy cavalry. Basically any cavalry. And the bowmen, they counter the skirmisher and the light horse, they counter the archers. Now, we have seen two people with archers. Light horse are very, very expensive. And they are not great in certain terrain types here. It reduces their damage. For example, here in wetlands, pursuit and screen go down by 30, damage by 15, and toughness by 10. So they deal almost no damage in wetlands and mountains and hills anywhere. Now, we are not really surrounded by any of those. You can see here down there it says terrain planes in the tooltip that we are hovering over right now. So honestly, I think I think some light horsemen might be pretty darn advantageous here instead of getting bowmen. I think we might actually be very few. This guy, did he have pike? Yeah, he had 100 pikes. So the pike would counter our light horsemen. Mm. But our light horsemen would counter his bowmen. Choices. Difficult choices. Something to definitely consider is getting them up to full maintenance. Costs us 0 0.7 prestige. We only get plus 0 0.5 at the moment. And once they're raised, they cost us plus 0 0.2 maintenance. So they're very expensive to get and very expensive to maintain. But I think we'll just go with them. We'll also see if maybe stationing them here makes them much better. Now they get less bonus out of being stationed in this particular holding than everyone else that we currently have. So we're not going to do that. We'll leave our pikemen in there because they get more out of being stationed here. What they get out of being stationed here depends on what you have built. We haven't built much at the moment, so uh, once we decide or have the money to build anything, we might try and consider, okay, this here helps infantry. Heavy infantry, archer, cavalry, and skirmishes. None of which we have, so that's not super helpful. 
but uh, here it would help the the palisades would help the spearmen and since we are spearmen put there building palisades could be a good idea militarily speaking not necessarily for everything else so we'll unpause you see we are now gaining minus two well minus point two prestige per month that is until I pressed F3 to call this window. You can also just do it over these little icons here. So military is there. Um, until they are at 100 strength, we are going to be in minus here. We can deal with that. Something about the speed. Don't go above 3 speed when you're starting out with this game. Don't. When you're at war, maybe even consider going down to 2 speed. You can do that with the numpad plus minus. If you don't have numpad plus minus, you can also just click here. Um, and it will slow down accordingly. If you press space, the game is paused. And then you can adjust it as well. So, you needn't be hectic. Use pause a lot. Pause is a good frame. A uh, good friend of yours. Alright, so we're getting our troops in. We're getting everything ready. Something we could consider is going here. Now... The thing is, I don't know at this stage of the game how much it will cost me to call in my allies to help in this war. We realistically only need one ally. We don't need everyone. One of them will be enough. So, we'll just try this. We'll just go ahead. He will dislike us slightly for it, understandably so. But we'll just push in here. And actually, I think... Yeah, okay. No, 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 we declared war. So we also, as we declared war, we got a little event here. Which is also part of our lifestyle. And it's a good one. A very good one, too. We can use it right now. Something I find a little bit unnerving is that this army is already walking. We'll talk about that in a second. So, while studying the taxes, uh, tactics of ancient generals, I was astonished to learn about the exploits of Alexander the Great during his conquest of Mesopotamia. Here's a little bit of history lessons for you if you want. But we get a commander trait if we do choose to have one. So no amount of water will stop my armies. We could become a forder. Meaning we can cross rivers and straits without disadvantage. And our travel speed goes up, which doesn't help us with armies. Now there is a river right there. There's a river right here. There's a lot of rivers. So having that could actually help us. Right now we're in a more of defensive position because his army is immediately coming for us. Um, we'll have to see about that. We could become a uh, siege, a military engineer, siege master, which is what I call them. And that is very, very good early on especially. It just decreases the amount of time that it takes to finish a siege. We could also get Reaver. Not super sensible for us because I don't think we are allowed to raid. Uh, we'll have to check that in a moment, but we'll go ahead and we'll take the military engineer. Right. We might not even go personally into battle. So we're pausing right now because the enemy is jumping right on top of us. Uh, it's a pretty bad situation, to be quite honest. Because we must raise our armies, and if he's standing on top of us, we can't do that. Well, we can still, but... Ideally, it's, it's kind of bad. So right now, he's moving in on our territory. And he's, I told you earlier that a county has baronies. So each thing where I get this white circle there is basically a barony within our county. You can also see them here and can navigate through them like so. Now, this is our capital, basically, and he wants to attack us there. Understandably so. We have this little flag onto which we can raise our troops and actually, we can raise raiders, just not while we're at war. So what we're going to do is we move this rally point up here. If he wants to get there, he has to move through us. Through this castle here. But he's going to try and get it. So we'll click on raise all here. So our troops will start raising. I'm not doing it here, because he's arriving there in a moment. And these guys will take a while to gather. Actually, only one day, but it's fine. No worries. Another thing we want to do is call an ally in here. And we want, ideally, this guy here. So, um, I'm not quite sure which one he is. This guy. So, we'll call this guy in. It costs us 75 prestige, which we have. 
But with his troops and our troops, we should be fine and do this. No problem. So our troops are raised now. Okay, we have 200 pike and 55 horses. And we are personally leading as a military en engineer and a logistician. None of which will help us much in battle. But we are a very good commander. We have command advantage of 23, which per commander point increases our damage by 2%. For the whole army, basically. For all of our men in arms and everything. So if we send our troops like this right now, you will see the game gives us a little bit of an indicator. Telling us the chances are even. So it could go either way. We win, they win. We don't know. We have higher commander... Uh, more commander traits, we have a higher quality army, we have more men in arms, but they have a better army commander than us. So instead of going right there, we'll wait. Okay, maybe not. I wanted to wait for our ally to join here, but we'll see. So, what I'm trying to do right now is we're gonna cross over into neutral territory over the river if we can. Because if he follows us then, then he will be crossing a river, attacking us. Warfare is... It, it looks very simplistic, but it's complicated in a way that once you understand it, it's not so complicated anymore. <laughs> but there's a lot to it. You can see when our troops arrive respectively. So this army here will take six days to reach where I'm sending them. This army will take four days. So we're not going to get away from here. Can we go here maybe? No, nine days. Can we go here maybe? Ten days. Can we go here? Eight days. So we're not going to get away. It doesn't matter. We're not going to move our army. We're just going to stand our ground. We don't have a better commander than me. I'm literally the best we have. <laughs> so we'll have to see how it goes. There's a potential that our ally, who is just joining, will raise his army and join us. But as you can see, a lot of things happening here. So let me pause again. As you can see right now, we are engaged. I'll zoom out a little bit to get the war sound uh, down a little bit more. So this bar here, you have to be a little bit careful on what exactly your, your side is. For us right now, the blue side is our side. You can see the attacker over there and the defender over here, and that's us. It's a little bit confusing at times to understand who is who. Yeah, but since we have our horses, even though they're not at full strength, they're countering these guys. And you can see they deal only 80% of their damage because they're being countered. Whereas these guys, they are fighting in favorable terrain and they're uh, countering the enemy's bowmen. So these are all kinds of good right now. Our advantage here, again, each point in advantage means 2% of damage. We have plus three in our direction right now. It's uh, shown why that is. Basically, it's our territory we're fighting in. Our commander skill is high. Our battle roll is, which what we can see here, it's um, a maximum roll is 10 and the minimum roll is zero, basically. And we got a seven, so that's pretty good. And he got a one, which is not pretty good. So basically, given all his advantage stuff that you can see in the bottom here accumulated against our advantage stuff means who gets the damage bonus at the moment so our damage is increased right now next battle phase it might it might turn around again but generally generally if you start out winning so this bar your bar is growing quicker than their bar you're pretty pretty sure to win um, so right now he has advantage, so his army deals 8% damage more, ours doesn't, but it doesn't really matter all that much because he's, he's still being countered. And our ally just joined, so we have a lot more troops now. And thus, we win this battle. Now, the enemy army, if it's not entirely defeated will, as you can see, run back somewhere, retreat to a place. And they have retreated to their home, and we are now attacking them here. Let's look at, again at this battle. 
And you will see that... Huh? Let me lock the tooltip. They have a huge advantage. Why? Because they are defending a crossing of a river. Had I taken the f uh, Forda trade earlier, they wouldn't get this advantage. And it's a big one too. It's hard to counter. So the enemy damage is increased by 40% right now. That's a lot. But we have the absolute numerical advantage. Not just that. But we have a lot of troops now that he doesn't have. He only has some bowmen. So he doesn't really have a hope of winning this one. And his whole army got crushed. This happens if they're defeated in an early battle phase. So if you ever wonder why you lost all your army, all of a sudden they're just gone. It was because your army was defeated in a very early phase. Because the enemy was just too strong. Now, how do we know when we win a war? You have this little nice little flag here. For every war you're in, you, you could be in more wars than one. We are only in one. You click on it and you can see the little number here, 50%. Well, I'm in the way. Let me, let me help. So down here, you see this little number on the flag, 50%. If you mean, click of it, then you get this screen here, which has your war score, plus 50%. And you need 100%, unless you have a certain perk, which lowers it, to win a war, to enforce your demands. You need, I think, 30% to get a white piece. So white piece is kind of like, okay, status quo, everyone just... Go back home. Nothing happened. We'll never talk about this again. And you can see... Um, due to his personality... It's actually more that we need to have. We need 46... Um, plus to, to get him to actually consider it. Yeah? Um, but generally the base reluctance is minus 30. For white piece. We don't want white piece. We want to win this. So we have to wait for 100%. But... Especially in attacking wars, you can only get so much war score out of attacking. So we could defeat his army over and over and over again. It would not increase our war score any further than 50% unless we capture an important person like himself in such a battle. So what we have to do as the attacker, we will have to siege. We will have to take his lands. Ideally, the lands that the war is about. You can tell what the war is about by these dotted borders. If they're just red, solid, then yeah, they're an enemy. Yeah, you can siege them. But the dotted lines are what the war is, uh, war is actually about. And that's your primary goal, your target. Unless, of course, the enemy capital is a little bit closer. But moving through larger swaths of land and all that kind of stuff, we'll see that in the future, eventually. Right now, we're just going to fight here. So here now, the military engineer thing comes into play. Because we're sieging now, if we look at this, this is a siege. And each phase of the siege is, um, well, it has this little thing here. So it takes four days, or next siege event is in four days. Every 14 days a new siege event occurs. The baseline is 20, but due to our proficiency in siege this goes quicker and each siege event will potentially lower the time up here it takes another maximum nine month but it could be reduced depending on what siege event comes up so let's have a little look here the next siege event is a stalemate so we didn't help this at all but these events tick quicker with the commander perk that we have and we got desertion so some of the enemies left the castle, giving us a siege progress of plus five. And we need 325 overall to get it. We get plus one per day anyway, as long as we maintain the siege. We have no siege weapons right now, so we get a very measly plus one uh, per day. If you have catapults, if you have trebuchets, later bombards, that is hastened. And if you are too weak for what you're doing, uh, you are actually taking a whole lot longer potentially not even being able to break in another thing you need to know is you need to have more troops besieging than the enemy has in their garrison so these are not fighting they will not be able to be raised into an army to attack you these are always stationed where they are you can't move them but i need to have more than 400 to even start the siege if i don't i can't i have no hopes of winning it 
So I can't even begin it. The fourth level, this tells you a little bit about how tough it is to get in there. The higher the fourth level, the longer the siege will take. Comparatively with your um, siege weapons and all that kind of stuff. Now you have a little bit more down here. I don't think I've ever sp uh, spoken so in depth about this window, but here we are. So what do we have? Um, the people are currently fine. There is supplies, they're slowly running low. And we could, if we ever breach the walls, go ahead and attack it. You can also see it here. Right now, we're just basically surrounding it. We only have the spear icon. In a while, we might have a first wall breach. Let's see. We'll wait for the next siege event to happen. Okay, it's a disease outbreak. Sickness is spreading. That's good for us. That even increases our daily progress a little bit. So the people, sickness are spreading. So daily siege progress goes up by 10%. Rampant disease now, plus 20%. So we are up to 1.2. We still haven't breached the walls, so we can't assault it. And I definitely wouldn't recommend doing that anyway. But if you have a much, much more mighty army and you breach the walls, you can quickly finish a siege by just running in there. So now we have a bunch of stalemates here. Which has no effect, but the rampant disease stays. Supplies are still running low. Some more deserters. No wonder. Who would want to fight in a disease-ridden place? Alright, okay. Very good. Ah. Our lovely wife is pregnant. We can't wait for that to finish up. So now they're starving. So this will give us another 15% siege progress. This only happens once. This gives us continuous plus, And this only pushed it by plus 10%. So the longer you maintain the siege, the earlier, the quicker the enemy is gonna fall, basically. And our friend here is being raided by his neighbors. But his, uh, his liege is sending some troops to hopefully deal with it. Let's look at these raiders real quick. They have bowmen. Very good. I think we made a good choice. A, an expensive choice with the horses, but one that will be helpful. Alright, very good. So the raiders are coming to us now. But we just won the war. We won the war for two reasons. We took the one castle he had. If he had more castles here, we would have to take all the castles to get the whole county. But he only has one at the moment. So we took it. That already would have been the, the completion. But on top of it, we also captured the man. So, yeah. You can see by just capturing 100% immediate win. And by getting all of what we needed, also 100%. So now we can go ahead and enforce our demands. So be it. So now we have this. This belongs to us. There are currently raiders coming in here, which I don't quite like. And since we have a little bit more land, we can also raise some more armies immediately. Which we will do because we will try and fight off the raiders, which will be quite difficult for us. Because our army isn't all that strong. So we'll have to see. But we have the defensive advantage, so... And we have the counter. So right now the army is much stronger than us. Much stronger. But we are countering his bowmen. So that's pretty good. We have the advantage right now. Pretty high. Plus 13. So let's have this run out a little bit. You can beat an army with superior numbers. If you have the better army. Better equipped. Better... Soldier, better leader, better everything. Okay, we are deeply cut. We were severely injured, which is very threatening to our health. Um, so, let's see. We want a physician right away. A court physician. Which will be presented to us in options in a moment. Oh, look at that. We, we actually managed... One of our knights slew their general. So, numerically, still very balanced... But we'll get there. 
Oh no, we're one-legged and we're very close to death. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, lots of things happening all at once. That is war. That is why earlier I suggested if you go to war, slow down. Go to two speed. Don't rush it. There's a lot going on. You'll get overwhelmed very, very quickly. So take your time. Each event all on their own time. So we want court physician. We get some options here. This lady here, generally it goes from top to bottom. So this lady is the best. Top one is best. Then uh, it's okay. You know, um, we'll just get the uh, okay one. Doesn't really matter. Uh, because we can actually properly afford her. We can afford both, but 50 gold out of 84 is uh, as a big ask. They both cost the same. She's better at it, apparently, but doesn't really matter. So we'll, we'll get her as our court physician. And that is the danger, of course, of leading your own armies. You could get killed. You could be captured. All that. So she says, and always read these. I only recently learned that. That is actually in the text that it helps you. So, grievously injured. Is that bone that I see embedded in my flesh or something that should be hidden even deeper? As my skin yawns like the hungry moors of death, I'm transfixed by the river of blood that spills forth. You are gravely injured, my lord. We need to tend to you at once. So, we could go, ah, just, you know, give me, give me a cough drop and uh, tell me a nice little bedtime story and we'll, I'll be right as rain. Or you could be, you know what, I'm brutally mauled. Uh, maybe, maybe you do something a little bit more experimental. So we'll go for that. It's too late for caution. Could be a good event, could be a bad event. Could be on both, so we'll see. Disaster strikes. Okay, she lit a fire in my chamber. I presume she meant for the heat to help balance my humors. However, as her assistant began to strap me down to my bed, I noticed the iron rod heating up in the flames. I didn't believe it could be in more pain, but I was soon proven wrong. So, um, yeah, she botched my wound treatment, which gives me another severe health penalty. I would be surprised if I see the, if I see my heir being born. I would be surprised. So, okay, we, we could, we could kill her as, okay, you are a traitor, clearly. Uh, we could imprison her. Um, or we could just be like, listen up. We all make mistakes. What we could also do is this will not happen again and she will be a little bit better for the next bit of time. Uh, and she will lose some prestige. Or we just go with... We knew the risk. And, and I think we'll go with that. And uh, again, time for treatment. She says a simple treatment will suffice. Uh, I think she might be a little bit scared of the extra stuff, so come on, let's let's do what you can do. And she says, wonderful, wounded healing. Please, beard, my chieftain, it is necessary to dispel the foulness within. So, excellent work. I'm actually healing this time. We're still gonna die but in about a year, so. Very good, so we defeated... The enemy, we can't stand on our troops right away because there are enemies too close to us. But we could become raiders ourselves now. So we could return the favor to him. And there we did. So we took a bunch of risks here. We led in battle, we started war. We had some experimental treatments. We didn't see our air to come of age. But since we did have an heir already, our half-brother, we will just continue playing as him. So, dangerous business. Another thing that can happen, you can lose titles as you die. I don't think it happened now, but we'll look at it in just a second. So, Chieftain Kerbar of Ossery has crossed the door to the world of spirits at 53 years of age. He died from his wounds. An old man, he lived a long, fulfilling life. Chieftain Raikan ascends to the throne. A learned administrator, he is recognized as one of the most qualified people to ascend to the throne. So we'll continue as him. And we didn't lose anything in the transition. Why? Because there wasn't another heir here. And we'll talk about that once there are plenty of heirs to be had. So, a lot of the things that we did earlier when we started the game, we have to do again now. 
Because this is a new character. And while he had done some things in his lifetime before we took over as playing him, um, he is not just all that. So we need to pick another lifestyle tree. And he is very good in stewardship. That's his main perk. So we're going to go just this direction. Uh, he has already gone through Avaricious. Income plus 10% doesn't matter much. With 1.6 gold, what do you get out of 10%? It goes up to 1.7 gold. Wow. Uh, that's not super good. Domain might be better. Stewardship, extra, extra. The rest here doesn't really matter. We are too small to care about what our courtiers and guests think about us. It's, it's not yet a problem. So I think um, either wealth focus or domain focus. And since he's already avaricious in this tree here, I think we'll go for wealth focus just for the RP reason because he seems to be into gold. <laughs> so we'll take that. All right, our heir is unmarried. We have our player heir, another half brother and our chancellor. So we need to find him someone. Now, something to note. Your alliances might not always survive a death. So we are still allied to this guy, but we are no longer allied to this guy. And we're no longer allied to this guy. Because the reason we were allied I do are done now. There was a marriage with our previous character. He's dead. No more alliance. No more marriage. It's done. It's a little bit harsh, but it's something to keep in mind. So what we need to do, of course, is form new alliances. So we have an unmarried heir. Let's see. Let's see. Do we have something Irish here that gives us an alliance? No? We'll just go with alliance power and check like that. French, Basque, Andalusian, Catalan, Gaelic. Gaelic is up here. That could work. 560. She's fairly young. It's not so bad. Dutch, Andalusian. Let's see. Is there anything Irish? Yep. So we could marry into this family again. And that would be fine. They are very, very, very weak though. <laughs> so, might not really matter. Might not really make a lot of sense. Uh, let's see. We'll clear that out. We'll go by Alliance Power again. We don't want to marry him to a 42 year old because he won't be having children with her. She's past her childbearing age. As harsh as that might sound. So I think we're just going to go with the Gaelic girl. It's still six years until he can start having children with her. But it's good enough for me. And these are pretty strong. It's fine. So we'll go with them. And we have an empty council position. Why? Because this was our council position. His. Before he ascended the throne. So we need to make sure we get a new lad here. Who's ideally, you can sort here. Halfway good at being a steward. Uh, our champion is not the worst steward in the world. Alright. Okay. So. Lots of things again to consider after a succession. If you didn't lose anything, which isn't the case right now. Make sure your counselors like you. Especially your spy master and your bishop. The bishop... More so than anything else. It might not be a bishop. It might be called something else depending on the culture and religion you're playing as. But we have a bishop. And if he doesn't like you, he's not going to pay his share. So what we can see, our income is only our own holdings. That's it. The church is not paying anything. That's no good. So what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and sway the man. Which is something we can just do on the side. It costs us nothing. We can only sway one person at a time. Or do anything else like that. So swaying will eventually, hopefully, potentially, slowly, increase his liking us. So that is pretty cool. And you definitely want to get to the point that he endorses you. So there's a nice little green thumbs up. Rather than the red thumbs down right now. Now everyone else doesn't really matter much. Something I would suggest, potentially, is looking into what your diplomat is doing. We need him on foreign affairs because we need pre prestige extra, the bonus. Um, this guy will be 
organizing our armies right now because it lowers how much they cost us. And everyone else is doing what they should be doing. We could think about construction. Um, so our development would increase. Helps. Helps. Uh, development basically is a flat modifier for everything in your county. So a two is nothing. Uh, but you can tell here um, in the income, this is highly dependent on your development. Because development, if we look at that, here you can see, increases the levies, taxes, and supply limit gain in the county. So if we want more troops, if we want more money, we need high development. And two is nothing. So honestly, the plus 4%, I think we can deal without. I'd rather have him work on increasing our development because this is a very very long progress this will take forever forever so just keep your guy on development the money that he's going to generate you there are events where potentially he gives you a lump sum of money that's great sometimes it might make more sense but the earlier you start on this the the quicker the sooner it's going to pay off speaking of paying off so I selected the army and we'll put a new commander because, well, our brother just died. We are not going to lead ourselves. No, thank you. We're also not going to put in our brother and our player heir, though he's really good. But if he dies, that's a bit of a problem. That's a bit of a problem. We could instead put in our steward and champion or we put in our nephew because he's also an open terrain expert, which is... For the most part, what we have here. Well, not here. This is wetlands and marshlands, but... This potentially is better than a flat higher bonus. So we'll put in this guy. And now we set them to raiding. And now we go attack him and do the same thing that he wanted to do us. And we raid him. Or we go south, maybe. We'll see. Okay, so he is accepting our betrothal there. So that's a new alliance. And you can see right here, we have the better do, uh, army commander. We have more trades, higher quality, more men in arms. We're going to kill them if we attack there. And it's pretty sure. Like, the, the green, you will probably win. You rarely lose on that. Rarely. It's not impossible, but it's rarely. Plus, this army is following... Because they also have beef with him. Because he raided his lands as well. So he will also come and fight. Very likely. We're not going to even fight alone, I think. He's not our ally right now. But because this guy attacked his lands as well. He has something to say about it. So he's joining us. Despite not being in a direct alliance war with us at this very moment. So that's pretty great. We got some help here. And now we're just cleaning up. And the cleaning up is even better because our cavalry is made for cleaning up. So the enemy is being sent away. And our raiders are now sitting here and raiding their, to their heart's content. And they have a lot of gold actually to get. Loot 19. That's quite a bit. Um, why are we standing still and not raiding? Hmm. Okay. Why can't we raid here? Alright. Looks like we can't raid there. I'm not quite sure. Alright, very good. We have our own, very own player here now. Oh, he's a genius. That's crazy. This is one of the best traits you can have in a child. Or in a character or anything. Because their monthly lifestyle experience is immediately plus 30%. No matter what they get. So that's a crazy, crazy good uh, trait to start out with. Uh, we'll give him a good insular name. So he will be Andrew. May he grow strong and wise. And with our heir selected, we're going to go ahead and... Um, we're going to go ahead and select what he should be. So as a tribal ruler... You can go with everything. Absolutely you can. But Marshall is likely to give you more prestige. 
overall. And prestige, as we've learned, is pretty darn important as a tribal ruler. So we'll go with that. Now we're looking to go raid, and we can only go raid where there's this little torch icon. Sadly, he doesn't have that. I'm not going to raid this church, but I'm going to go straight here because he's unlikely to raise his troops to defend outside of his own capital. Really. So another thing we can do is look for a spouse immediately. Let's check alliance power, but there's really not anything here. We need to wait until more children are being born. All of these are what is spawned when the game starts on your chosen start. So we'll leave that for a while, but what we can do is we can give him a guardian, educate the child, and we'll do it ourselves. So that way we will get a direct say in how the child develops. We'll get events around that, so that's all pretty neat. Are you at war? No. He's just literally fighting that guy. Because he's angry. <laughs> so there are some raiding targets for us around. And we do that. We'll see if it works here. We have more troops than he has standing around. So that's all fine. Okay, let's see what options do we have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yes, we can station more men-at-arms regiments. We can't do that right now because our troops are raised. We can lawfully imprison our court physician, or we can pardon her. And I think we're just going to pardon her. We could create the Duchy of Leinster. This one is big and important. This one is very big and important. I didn't even know that we could do that out of here. But this should be our next goal. Why? With our succession law, pressing F2, we get to this thing here, up there, the realm. And our succession law here... You start usually with confederate petition. Usually. And this is the worst type of succession you can have. That's why you start with it. Because that's how it was. Basically what it means is. Everyone inherits equally. I'm just not going to show the text. We're just going to talk about it. So if I have two children now. Two male children. Girls don't count at this point in time. If I have two male heirs. One will get this, and the other will get this, and the realm will be split. They're both going to be independent rulers. You basically lose land. But if I become a duke, so one rank above what I am currently am, then the other son will still get this county, but they will be a vassal. There's a lot more nuance to it, but we're going to talk about it as that comes along. So for right now, just keep that in mind. Alright, and I'm a little bit annoyed with the raiding here. Why is this not happening? Why are we not raiding anything? Okay, we'll send our army home. Maybe stand them down, maybe call them back up. I don't know exactly. I'm a little bit confused why the raiding is not happening right now. Stop being a raiding army. Be a raiding army. Always raid. And now go raid. Oh, is it because there's zero loot here? Probably. There's also zero loot here. Okay. Where can we even go to raid anything? Zero loot. Zero loot. Okay, that's why we can't raid anything, because there's literally nothing to raid. Interesting. Hmm. Ah, very good. Wedding celebration. Again, do we go for the prestige or do we go for the gold? We're pretty close to the gold that we need to create the duchy title. Uh, so, this title here, we need 87 gold. We're pretty close to that. So I think we're going to take the... Then again, if we create it, we get 300 prestige as well. So I think we're going to take the gold and create the title immediately. So now... We have gained a new rank. Let's stop raiding. And now we disband our troops. So they don't cost us anything in maintenance anymore. Well, they do cost something, but less. 
So now we are a duke. So we have, let's say, graduated from being a count to being a duke. This means we can be much, much stronger and much bigger. Not unlimited, but something. If you look at uh, duchy titles here, so shift Q or just clicking on this little button, you can see Leinster, Munster, Meath, and the ones that have this little red thing, they aren't created yet. They don't exist. So over here is the Duchy of Ulster doesn't exist yet. Uh, Meath already exists. Someone else holds it. And so on and so forth. So the next Duchy title would be over here in Munster. A Duchy has requirements when you can create it. So you need for this Duchy here. This is this whole little southern bit. If you want to have that. We need to hold at least three of these counties to be able to get it. If you don't, you can't create it. So this guy here, he controls two out of three. He would need to take this or that. And then he can start creating the Duchy of Munster. Which we, of course, would like to avoid. But we need to be careful. If we take too much, and even if we don't create the title, due to our succession law, the title will be created for one of our children. So... We need to be a little bit careful there. But we could easily take this here. If you so desired. Well, I say easily, but due to his alliance and everything, he's actually quite formidable still. Could we take him on? Oh, we absolutely could take him on. So we could take a bit out of his land. Because due to his fighting us and him being crushed by us. He's actually really super weak right now and costs us only 18 uh, prestige to do that. So we're absolutely going to take it. We're absolutely going to take it. And we want the bit that is connected to our stuff because it's a little bit better for army movement and all that kind of thing. So... Joke's on him. He was stronger before, but he isn't anymore. So we're going to move our army rallying point here. Raise all of them there. Just so we have a little bit of a shorter route. And since he has nothing, like literally nothing, it doesn't matter. We can just have our army right there. If he had more troops, we would need to be a bit careful where we put them up. We would do it in a safer region where he's unlikely to immediately have troops right there next to us. A new culture head, doesn't matter. We look into our culture heads once we are the culture head. So now we're moving in here, and we speed up to three. This war has no danger for us. He has 19 troops right now because he was completely crushed with his raiding army. And it takes time for that to regenerate. And we are taking advantage of that big time right now. Sometimes you get lucky breaks like this. Right, so this will take a while. This is the same thing here. Rampant disease. They are still fully stocked. Let's see. Okay, so we have a little bit of a problem here. Our enemy... Um, has gotten a, a claim. An unpressed claim. On one of our lands. Uh, because our chancellor has messed up a little bit. So this guy here... He now has a claim on our land. And he is very, very strong. So that is a very bad claim that he has. It's, it's very bad for us. Even with our alliances, that is a big problem. So he might attack us now for, for our main holding even. Our home. <sighs> okay. Um, okay, she mistreated our player here. Ugh. Okay. A niece of ours was taken somewhere. Doesn't matter. So if he now decides, okay, I'll take this because he has something right there. That's a problem. We can call in our allies and everything for cheap, but that could still go wrong. We'll see about it. Let's see. Corrupt tax collector. Caught. Oh, I've noticed the various inconsistencies and omissions in the tax records for Leinster. 
It is clear that these errors can be cannot simply be mistakes. Someone has been embezzling funds. Fortunately, the trail of this mysterious culprit is erratic enough that it is it is difficult. Unfortunately enough, it is difficult for me to determine exactly which tax collector is responsible. So um, assume direct control over taxation in Leinster, which is good. Immediately increases our control, which is low in newly acquired counties. Um, we could execute all of them and gain some dread, which is good for basically everyone fearing you a little bit. We could try and deal with it discreetly, which is a challenge to our um, scheming, influency, scheming, thieving ways. And we're not very good at that, so we have a very low chance of getting something really good out of it. Uh, just a 40% chance and a 60% chance of it going really, really wrong. So I'd rather take over the taxation and lines directly and take the 20 control increase. Um, what does control mean? So we can see here control is its own number. And depending on how it is, it's going to negatively affect everything. How many troops can you raise here and how much money you get out of it? Uh, you can put your marshal. You can put him to increase the control like that. Then he stops whatever else he's doing. But since they're all pretty terrible at their jobs, there's always a good chance they're going to mess it up. So we'll just send them to control, increase control there, and that's fine. So hopefully we'll have this in just a second. Very good. And that means also victory for us immediately. So now we can stand our troops down again. And continue here. So this guy is our biggest threat right now. Because he has this lovely claim on our stuff. He has a lot of claims, but his claim on our stuff is the only claim that's right here. So that's a problem for us. <laughs> he's fighting certain things, uh, which he's partially winning, partially losing. He's winning against uh, Northumbria in the Sons of Lothbrook. So Ragnar Lothbrook is currently coming here. Uh, but he's also losing another war where he's attacking East Anglia. So we'll see when, when he turns his eye upon us. We'll see when that happens. Eventually it will. So we've already taken two more counties all around us, which has increased our position slightly. Uh, right now we still have only 900 and something soldiers. Uh, 500 out of 900, so we need to wait for this to regenerate over time now. But, we will almost have doubled our troops through the conquests that we have made. So that's pretty great. And our wife is pregnant yet again. That can be good, that can be bad. Where is... what? Why is my child not here? Oh, he's my nephew. He's not actually my child. Oh, very good. He's possessed. He's a possessed genius child that is very ill. Oh, good stuff. Oh, I might not ever even recover. So the sons of L Ragnar Lothbrok, they have won here. Oh, no. Our nephew and heir... Andrew has just died. Today, with the passing of Andrew, the future of Leinster has changed its course. We will never know what kind of high chieftain he would have become. Or if his death is a blessing or a curse on this high chieftain. Now this stresses us out, of course. But we're, we're pretty chill at the moment, so a little bit of stress doesn't hurt us much. We can absolutely deal with that. Let's see. We have too few champions. We, we could use some more. Well, it's fine. Let's station our horses here in Loch Garman. That only really improves them a little bit. So it's not, not super important. Uh, oh, we could negotiate an alliance here. Ah, yeah, with this guy again. We'll definitely do it. It costs us a little bit of stress because we are shy. Which is one of these traits here. But I'll deal with it. 
Good thing our wife's pregnant. So we could try and get some more people here. So if we have a guest, which we could give some money and be like, hey, join my court, maybe. A, f a clash of culture and faith. A missive from Pope Victor has arrived. It starts off with pleasantries and outlines importance I hold in the eye of the Irish people. Your practice of polygamy is a strict opposition of Catholic doctrine and is a sin in the eyes of God. I only wish for your salvation. Please lead your people into the light and shed yourselves of excess spouses. A dilemma indeed. What do I value more? The customs of my people or the doctrines of our faith? So, the Irish culture loses any marriage-altering tradition that conflict with the doctrine of the Catholic Church. We lose two levels of devotion and we spend 500 uh, piety. Now, we can't afford that. We cannot afford that. And we need piety to declare wars and everything. So, uh, we'll, le we'll lose polygamy in the Irish culture and we must uphold Catholic doctrine. Irish culture is for Zaken the polygamous tradition. I actually wasn't even aware we had that. But that's okay. So we could try and give him some money and uh, recruit him to our court. And that way we would get another pretty good uh, soldier. We will do this. And we can tell him, be be a soldier, be a knight. Our player here, we're not going to force to be a knight. Everyone else will has to be a knight. Um, something you can do with courtiers like that, find them someone to marry. They will generate children in your court. And um, they will stay in your court. So that's good. I mean, yeah, they're both low warned. The game will warn you, oh, they're not part of your dynasty. Well, I'm not trying to have them part of my dynasty, that's fine. It's still not endorsed by our bishop. We're still working on the swaying him. I don't know why we wouldn't be endorsed by our bishop. We're doing so good here. All right, we have enough money and enough prestige to build something. We can't upgrade our castle yet. We don't really have enough resources for that. But we could build something here. So we could build palisades, a war camp, a gathering hall, or markets. So the gathering hall is pretty darn good. Plus 0.25 prestige. The war camps are also darn good with extra knights and knights effectiveness. And this is also darn good with extra fort level, extra damage for our stationed guys, extra troops, extra everything. I think because prestige is so important, uh, we're going to go with gathering holes. And it also increases our control growth. And it decreases the cost for hosting feasts. And it gives us some more soldiers as well. Not really good ones, but some. We could also go with the, with the markets. But again, gold isn't as important here as prestige is. So we'll pay the big prestige here to get some gathering holes going. Now, this place here has Palisades, I just realized. So, let's check our army. It might make more sense to move these over here. Yes, it would. Because here they get a much higher bonus than over in the other one. And now we can put our horses just here. That's fine. They won't profit much either way. But our, our pike, because there's Palisades wall here, they absolutely profit here. You can also tell who's stationed where. You can view it like that, and it immediately opens up. So let's continue a little bit. We, we are pretty much out of gold right now. I can see that this guy is losing another war. Defending against Prince Rodri the Great of Gwynedd in the Holy War for the Earldom of Diflin. So this guy is currently fighting this guy for this bit. I mean, I can't say I relish to live next to an Englishman, but if I have to make a choice between an Englishman and uh, someone who has a claim on a land there, yeah. Okay, we have a player, Aaron's son, and we'll give him a good insulame, so he's going to be Magnus. And he's also going to be pushed into a martial education focus, and we will educate him personally. 
We are not really looking for a spouse still because, again, we're waiting for more children to be born that are actually sensible. You can filter this down a little bit. For example, we want an age difference of maximum five. There you go. Now you have some more age-appropriate options here. But nothing with anything cool going yet. Except, of course, we could have some more alliances. Maybe with Ulster. They're pretty far away. They don't matter much. But she's club-footed, so we don't really want that in our family line, so... Maybe with these guys, Oriel. Yeah, let's do it. Doesn't really matter. We want the alliances early on. We want to be powerful. We want to be defensible here. Excellent. So we can conquer much because we are a tribe. We have these extra, extra potential. Like conquest, war goal and war reason. That is a tribal thing. As a feudal, you don't necessarily have that. You need to have a different reason to go to war. So it looks like you can wage war forever, but in reality you cannot. There is a good limit to it. Oh, look at that. Our floating baby. <laughs> what the hell? I remember the day when my first child, Magnus, a beautiful boy, was born to my high chieftain, Aethin. You should remember that, because that day was... That day was when? Dear game? Like, two weeks ago. Um, memories like these bring me comfort. No matter what happens, I know that my family is there for me. And that house Dolbirn stands strong. Remember the death of Krundmail. I whisper under my breath. Now, what does that mean? If each house here has their own little motto. And it's... Remember the death of Krundmail for us, who is a chieftain somewhere in our bloodline. Who was killed. Unknown causes. I would say he was killed. So we remember his death, apparently. So we could give him a gift of 15 gold, which could bring him to a friendship to us, which doesn't really matter. We'll just take the stress relief. Treasuring that thought. It's all good. So we can't go to war with him again. Because there's a truce in place. We could break the truce, but that would make us a very, very easy target for almost everyone around us. Because people are not happy about truce breakers. Can't really attack this guy. Because, again, he's quite strong. And we do have the threat of the Vikings hanging over us. Oh, he might actually be beaten back now. He is attacking with 1,000 troops, but the defender here has gotten the the Lothbrooks here. I would say Jarl Halfdan is actually not a Lothbrook. Well, um, so they are taking back. Oh, God. So he has an alliance with these guys. If he comes to attack us for our stuff, we're absolutely dead. We're not going to be able to defend that. So what we are going to do is while we still can, while we still have an army with enough size to do it, we're just going to keep conquering. We're preparing for the eventuality of losing our main holding. So this early on and this close by everyone. No, we're not going to recruit that guy. Your troops are going to be raised fairly quick. So you needn't worry too much about where you raise them. Just keep in mind that your troops are very vulnerable while they're being raised. And there's a raider coming from north to our stuff. Very good. So we can't really do anything about that in the moment. But he's raiding uh, other territories than ours. So this army will likely attack us again. He's got no chance in hell to do anything to us. But he has really nothing left to do but try and fend us off like this. 
Now, earlier we checked how many counties of this place do we need to form the duchy. And it's three out of four. We can have two out of four. No worries. If we had three out of four, one of our heirs, if we have multiple, will get their own duchy over here. And then our heir would have to fight that brother to get that back into his own land. So we'll try and avoid that for now. And we'll just fight through here as best we can. So... They're defending against the Peasant Revolt, which they are losing right now, which I find very odd. Losing against Peasant Revolts is not something that really, really happens all that much. But it, it's only because the Peasants had the chance to actually siege some stuff. So that doesn't mean all that much. We'll soon be done with our little siege here. And I find it a little bit interesting, I must say, that Ireland is the beginner island because there's a lot of threats right here with the Vikings, I must say. So, yeah. I mean, they took Northumbria here. This guy being allied to that guy. That's a problem. And not a small problem either. So let's see, what, what type of troops do they have? They have Vigman and Bondi, so that's all light infantry, basically. Uh, these are archers and these are spearmen. Okay, that's not all light infantry. So that's bad for us. They have a lot of spearmen, which counts as our horse. Um, and these guys, what do they have? A lot of spearmen, also not good for us. So we should think about... Getting another men at arms regiment that counts as spearmen, which is uh, heavy, heavy infantry, armored foot. But we don't have a lot of prestige to do that. So we'll definitely wait until the war here is done. Before we spend what little we have. Oh, we have our first perk. So we've unlocked all this. Doesn't really matter. We are only thinking about what can we unlock now. And it really only matters on what we're currently doing and what we're trying to do. Meritocracy doesn't matter for us. We don't have a leash, so we can't go claim their throne. Um, all this stuff here could be interesting. Large levies. Vassal levy contribution plus 20%. We don't have vassals. Everything we own, we own directly. We, d we have city vassals and stuff that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't really count. They don't contribute much. So maybe we go into architect. Building cost contraction goes down. Ah, uh, maybe. 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 I think this is more interesting. Levy reinforcement range plus 100. Yeah. So we go here. Taxman. Doesn't really matter much. Unless, of course, we stop um, building control here. Uh, development, sorry. We'll have to see. Maybe. Let's switch him over to tax. How much do we get with the additional plus 25% chance? Or extra from... Uh, okay, so taxman adds... 1%. How much is 5% out of 1.1? So 10% is 0, 0,1. Half that is 0, 0, 0,05. That's nothing. We, we keep him on, on this. So it doesn't really matter. Later, these really do stack up. So don't dismiss them just because I'm currently... Nah, nah, nah. Don't care. Don't want it. They could really make a big difference later on. So let us venture forth into this little war here. And hopefully the English will just keep the the Vikings occupied for a long time. We'll just finish our little war here, disband our troops. And now we have grown quite substantially. Now we are at threat of a peasant revolt. Probably. Not yet. You can press F7 or click on the little fist icon here to see if there are any factions. If a peasant revolt is brewing, you're going to see it there. But we do have the problem of very low control almost everywhere. Like this is this is going up slightly. But it's not great. It's no longer in the danger territory. 
where it's super, super mega low, where you basically get nothing out of it. The lower the control, the less you get. And you want some control there to get some troops and some money out of it. So it could make sense uh, to move this guy over to work on the control elsewhere. Even though he's not fully finished with this one yet, but that's okay. So we get a little bit of troops and a little bit of money here. We get a little bit of troops everywhere. And we're growing a little bit more formidable, which is good because look at this guy. Uh, a raider is coming. So we might just have to raise our army. If he's coming for us. And beat him into oblivion. Okay, he's not. Let's see if we can go raid. While we still have the strength to do it. So, nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, everywhere we can go is nothing to get. We could raid across the water. Which costs us money to get our troops there unless they walk all the way around. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay. We'll just stand our army down again. There's nothing to be had. We learned that just now. That's okay. So what do we have? We could declare war, potential negotiations. Our nephew-in-law doesn't care, doesn't care. You can also just right-click these. You don't have to click on the X to dismiss them. Just right-clicking is also fine. We're not employing a wet nurse. So that could be a good thing to do. They're very, very cheap. So let's go with an honorable follower. This one here. Good evening, Tub of Popcorn. Welcome back. It's so lovely to see you here. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. You need a new power supply? That sucks so much. Well, we started a new um, playthrough campaign for learning Crusader Kings 3 because the last... Um, I, mended the, I mended the schism. Episode goes up tomorrow on the YouTube if you want to watch it. It didn't help. The Pope is still insane. So I'm done with that one. I'm, I'm so done with the Endless Crusade. So we're starting a new game. That's, uh, that's what's going to happen now. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, what else do we have that could be of interest right now? We're a little bit scared still of this guy, who has a lovely claim on our stuff. It's not great. Oh, an alliance expired because someone died. Right. Can we negotiate an alliance? No. So this is our ally. Could we take something from him? Possibly. We're just trying to grow before our enemies up here take us. I mean, we could also attack him, you know. It could be like, hey, give me the High Chiefdom of Meath, that's mine. Or just give me the county here, that's mine. But, yeah. Look at his allies. Look at all this. He would absolutely crush us. So if he decides to take this, he takes it. But luckily, he's only going around raiding right now. It's really not much we can do. Well, actually, there's something we can do. We can try and kill him. If he's dead... His claim is not inherited by anyone. Okay, let's check that out. Intrigue. We could try and invite people to help here. We could convince them. So we could get his wife on our payroll or his spy master. Now, the spy master or the wife both would be pretty good. The spy master would be even better. Um, he needs a bribe, though. He needs 13 gold to be convinced. We'll take him and we'll take the wife. To help us kill the man. So now we have a 95% chance um, of success and secrecy. So 
there's only a 5% chance this plot will be discovered and a 5% chance we're gonna fail. It'll take 11 months. So, we'll see. Oh, what's this? Minting new coinage. This is from our lifestyle experience tree now. It is my right and responsibility to determine what coinage is to be used throughout of all Leinster. The choices I make will determine how the coinage and, by extension, my realm is seen throughout the world. So we mint silver coins to facilitate trade. Development growth plus 5%, important one. Mint coins imprinted with my own visage. 350 prestige, very, very good. We could go debase the coinage with inexpensive nickel. Gives us, you know, something, something, but not the greatest chance. So we're going to go with imprinted with our own visage because that prestige will take it. Now, prestige can't be inherited, so if we die, that doesn't really matter. Having high prestige upon death, eh, won't be important. Let's see. Our spouse is acting on our behalf. There are many matters she can settle on my behalf, and the military presence of High Chiefess Aithen brings with her a firm reminder of my right to rule. Make sure my Chiefess and I stand ready in the defense of the realm. We'll take that. Because now, we have a lot of prestige with which we can get ourselves some armored footmen, which is good against the Vikings. So we'll do that. And we can also station them, and we'll put them anywhere, really, there. So we are in a negative right now until they're fully raised. And we could have more champions. How much do you cost? 26. That's too much. With what little we have, that is not enough. I'm still not... Oh, yeah, okay. He's no longer our, our heir, so we can force him now to be a champion. We could also try and find some. Invite champions. It costs us a bunch of prestige, but it's pretty good to have some soldiers on uh, in here. Oh, no. Okay, he's coming to raid us now. And there's gold to be had. We don't want to be raided, but I don't think we are capable of fighting him. We'll try. We'll try. Yeah. Stormgate, I heard about that. It does sound quite interesting. Close beta. Can you sign up through uh, through Steam? Yeah, I heard about it. I see. Uh, I saw Beastie QT talking about it. I'm not so much of an RTS man anymore. I'm, I'm really more for the grand strategy, slow. I can pause the game and I won't be overwhelmed. Still overwhelming at times, um, but I might be taking a look at Stormgate for sure. Once that's out. So I'll raise all our troops here. And we'll send them there. In hopes of potentially defending. So we have a cautious leader or we could get an unyielding defender. No, I think this is fine. Okay, so this is an even battle, it says. The opponent is recently disembarked. He has more soldiers and more men-at-arms. That's how it'll go. Let's see how it goes for us. So advantage is highly in our favor right now because he recently disembarked. He came off the ships. Minus 30. That basically destroys everything that he has here. And we made some good choices. Our heavy infantry is countering his guys. Whereas his guys are countering ours a little bit. Um, well, actually, not a little bit. Deals 10% damage due to being countered. That is crazy. That's a huge loss in power. And that is immediately being felt. So we are being fully destroyed here. No chance. Um, so... We could, in the retreat phase, retreat. I never managed it. Let's slow this down. Let's see if and when the retreat phase starts. I think it starts when we're done here. Okay, now we're in the defeat, uh, in the retreat phase. So, I am supposedly able to click somewhere and lead the army there. It says right here. Well, it did say before, but... Your army just kind of goes somewhere. The, the game decides for you. I've never managed to do a retreat. I don't know. There's supposedly a thing that you can do it. 
I don't know how. But we tried to fight them off. We failed a little bit. And we even lost our Chancellor in the battle. So now we're being raided. But we tried. We fought hard. We definitely know that heavy infantry is the right way to go. The problem is being raided is actually bad for business. As you might imagine. We could try that again, but now they are not even going to have the... Yeah, the disadvantage of being recently disembarked anymore. So... Yeah. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Yeah. They are much better in every regard. So we can't fight them anymore. And we can't send down our army either. Because uh, the enemy army is nearby, so... Let's speed up again. We're just trying to run away from them. So they're now raiding throughout our whole land, basically. And there's literally nothing we can do about it. Stand down our army. So let's check the effects of being raided. Um, here. So, building construction time. Minus 50%. Holding taxes. Minus 50%. Development growth. Minus 10%. And that is for four years being raided is extremely punishing i think it's it's way too punishing especially with how powerful uh the vikings are early on like that's just that's just silly it shouldn't be that powerful i don't think let them have their gold but i don't think they should get that much out of it they shouldn't be causing that many problems Okay, um, that looks like a tunnel we can use, so let's... Okay, this will be easy. 5% chance he discovers it, 95% chance he's killed, so let's go. May he rest in peace. He is dead, and our scheme is thusly done. And therefore, our greatest threat is eliminated, because his heir... He doesn't have a claim on our stuff. He could still attack us for other reasons, but he doesn't have a claim anymore. So, I take that as a win. And I think it's also kind of nice that the guy who raided us just now is dead. And that we killed him. I think that's pretty good. And speaking of which... Do we want to? Yes, it's very easy to kill him. I think we'll just go through that whole family line because he dared attack us. Sadly, killing children is often mu much, much easier because when they start taking over as a child, as a ruler, they're going to be pretty much hated by everyone in their realm. So a lot of people would be very happy to get rid of them. So there we go. A guild of stolen masons has established itself in the earldom of Leinster. Having dedicated craftsmen and personal service could help the region flourish. So... We might lose 75 gold or 50 gold, which we don't have. Uh, we try and strike a deal with the Chief Mason. All of which are pretty bad for us. We'll try. Maybe we get the great deal. Or we'll be bankrupt in a moment. Or rather losing money anyway. Surely I can find cheaper Mason somewhere else. Okay, I don't have to pay him. Very good. Let's find some cheaper stone Masons elsewhere. And get the control change by plus 20. Leinster. So that goes up right there. These guys are kind of standing around now. They have a lot of gold. So if we could defeat them... We could get that gold. If you defeat a raiding army before it gets back with its loot, you get that money. So... He becomes pensive, okay? A little bit of a learned lad. A little bit introverted there. I would like to try again. 
This time we have a much better chance of killing them. And if we do, again, we get all the money that they're carrying right now. Which is 117 gold. Which is very big for us. Very good. Watch it. 114 gold. We just got it. Absolutely worth it. And we could go and try and raid his stuff, but there's really nothing there. So we're just going to disband our army. So now we got the money that he stole from everyone. Which I like. And we could upgrade something. Can't construct a new holding, sadly. You're not eligible for such things as a tribe. And I don't want to upgrade something I might lose in succession. But right now we only have this one child and one heir, so succession doesn't matter too much to us. Let's see. A helping hand. We could get pious contacts here. But according to Odin... Oh god, there's a lot of stress for him. No, 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 no. That's between him and the gods. We're, we're not gonna try and get the gods involved. Let's see. Could we invite someone simple? His spy master. With a simple bribe? A bribe that we just got from his troops? Yes, please. Thank you very much. I am happy to pay that bribe. So we got his spy master on board. Let's see. There's a whole lot more to this family, but not too much. A few more that we need to kill. It also weakens him in so far that his alliances will slowly break apart. So that's pretty good for us. Every time one of these dies, alliances go down. And as long as no one knows that we are the ones killing them... Hmm. You know, what can a fella do? So we could build stuff here. But again, I'm a little bit reluctant to do so. Because we might lose this stuff. Huh? Okay. His chancellor dropped out. I don't care. I wasn't aware his chancellor was in there. Defensive measures. Garrison size plus 20%. We can purchase a truce. Which we can pay money to get the state that you get after war. Which means they can't as easily attack. What's going on here? Are you at war? Yes, you are. Conquest for the Earldom of Uli. Is that this? Yeah, of who we meant. So they're fighting over this. We can even see the dotted line here, slightly. Let's see if he wins. Could try and take that. We'll just slowly but surely take over Ireland. But right now we're going to weaken him as best we can. Life can be shared in many ways. Sometimes I think that there's no one I would rather spend my time with than my wife, I think. Of all the things to do in this life, we enjoy so many of the same ones. Oh, that's great. That's the kind of relationship you want. Now, this guy still has a bunch of alliances, which I don't really appreciate. And they're also very close. So I appreciate that even less. Oh, you're raising raiders? Let's see where you go. I dare you to come to me. I will absolutely destroy you and rob you of your will to live. I've done it before. I will do it again. Okay, now you're standing them down again. We're still, again, not a... Okay, let's get the rational empath to be our wet nurse. Improve our kids. 
All right, we have a bunch of people here we can recruit that we got through our call. And we'll just spend the money that we got from those raiders to get some good, good knights in here. Now, our stress is pretty high because we're shy. Talking to people is terrible for us, for our health. Let's get these guys married. Well, as best we can, anyway. And now let's see what we can do about our health. Mm, not much. Well, we could do a feast. Let's do a feast. We have the Grand Hall. Or is that not built yet? It's our Grand Hall. Oh, no, okay. We wait until the Grand Hall is built and then we'll have a feast. What do you want? Uh, dull egg pounding. You seem to be under the weather, my lord. I know a fair number of suitable remedies. I don't trust her. Yeah, she hasn't done good. A risky treatment. Nah, do no more than what is necessary. Okay, this is not the actual result from that treatment. This is from our stress here. So we could become reclusive, have a bad trade, reducing our diplomacy, our stewardship. But the stress we lose will go away quicker and we get a reclu... Uh, reclu seclude ourselves uh, option. Oh, look at that. She actually managed for once. So now that we took reclusive, which is overall bad for us, overall bad, minus two diplomacy, minus one stewardship, that's not great. That's really, really bad. But we can now seclude ourselves, which costs us prestige, also bad, but it reduces our stress. So now we are a little bit safer on that end. No longer overwhelmed by stress. But it's costly. Alright, and this is how you kind of start here. I think I've given you a decent overview so far in the very first episode. We accomplished a bunch of things. If you've got any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment. Um, if you can, join over on the Twitch. If you're on the Twitch, go check out the YouTube as well. And we stream thrice a week. Monday, Tuesday, and Saturday. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's try and kill the lad. Last thing we do today. He is killed and no one knows that it was us. Right. So every time this dude dies, basically, this gets inherited by someone else. So this is now under the Jarldom of Moon, basically. And he's in a lot of trouble right now. And we'll just keep murdering these kids in this family. That's just what we do now. So we can get his antiquarian in there. His marshal. How much for the antiquarian? 18. How much for the marshal? 100? Oh boy. Okay. 17. I will get the marshal then for 18 gold. Again, we're still spending their money. Well, more or less their money to kill them. That is what we're doing. Well, I think it's a fair trade. For what they did. How are their alliances right now? They don't have any. So that's great. Sadly, our scheme was discovered, so it's a little bit worse. But before I really end this, we can actually go and attack here. For... Oh, he doesn't have that anymore? Okay, I'm very confused right now. Who do I need to attack? This guy. Ah, he still have an, has an alliance. I'm trying to kill the wrong dude. I'm realizing now. Oh, God. I, sp I spent money to kill the wrong kid. Okay, let's spend some more money to kill the right kid. That was a little bit confusing right now. Because their flags are right close to each other and the highlighting was a little bit unclear. He still has alliances, sadly. He's being raided by a lot of people, though. We'll get there. We'll get there. Don't you worry. 
All right, and that's it for today. Thank you so very much for watching. We'll continue this series throughout the next few streams. Join the streams, ask your questions there, ask in the comments if you need anything. And I hope to see you around until next time. Bye-bye.